Hello, hola community, how are you? How is it going? Welcome to another episode of Blender Today Live, episode 134. Should we do something big for the 150? For everybody that is new here to the party, every Monday we'll get together and we'll see what's new in Blender since last week, what's changed. Last week in particular, maybe if, if today is the first time you watch the show, uh, we're going to see new things. There is new features in the Blender sequencer and the, the video sequence editor and geometry nodes, some UI updates. There are things to see, but not as many as other weeks because last week was back sprinting week, back, back, back fix sprint. So that means that at least the developers that are paid by the Blender Foundation that are hired, they have to fix uh, bugs. They only, they, the only thing they can do is just, just, just focus on bug fixing because we are close to um, moving Blender 2.92 from alpha, currently it's alpha, but in like two days on Wednesday, it's going to be beta. Yes, you know what that means, you know? 2.92 going beta, it means that you have to report bugs. You have to test it. You have to you, you have to spend as much time as you can, of course, while you're using when you're trying the new features to report bugs and issues. However, that is tricky because you know when when 2.92 goes beta, 2.93 will open and will become alpha. So right now you're probably if you're using if you're a good boy or girl, you're probably using 2.91 or even 283 LTS. And uh, yeah, there is this week, to this week, next week, we're gonna be in this weird space with weird limbo that um, the official release is 291. <coughs> the um, beta for 292 is available. <coughs> <coughs> I am, uh, sorry, I'm growing up. I, <coughs> now, can you hear me? Yes. And uh, on this weird limbo, again, 290, one official release 292 alpha and 293 beta uh, no 292 al beta and 293 uh, alpha <clears throat> no it's not i don't know i don't i hope it's not covid i barely leave the house i i'm i'm at home i usually stream this uh, from the studio but i've been at home for the last <laughs> to this march come on no, 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 please don't even say it. I hope I, it's just that I need water because I, I, well, that's one of the reasons. I only leave my house like um, maybe one or twice a week. At the supermarket, I don't talk with anybody because you use the machine that you, you do everything by yourself. It's self-checkout. So I barely speak during the whole week, except Mondays where I have to speak for two hours straight because I do this live stream now and then I do another live stream in Spanish where I where I cover this thing. So yeah. <clears throat> All right, now let's try and get started. Let's move into... Okay, I have a few small announcements to make. One is that people have been requesting here, the community has been requesting for me or for us, for Blender, to share these videos in another platform that is not YouTube, you know? All pl platforms are kind of, yeah, they, 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 yeah, they have the reasons why to stay away. Um, some have to do with privacy, some have to do with like advertisement stuff or like the way they, ma they are managed. So there is this, li this uh, library, <laughs> this website that is a library, it's called library.tv, which is a uh, platform that um, not really like endorsing and tell you to go there, but it's an alternative to um, to to YouTube, to something like YouTube, because it allows you to upload video, share, but they are not stored in one server by Google or whatever. They are uh, stored everywhere because it's decentralized. And um, they have this website, it's library, but they also have ODC, which is the same. It's like uh, the same as in the same kind of, um, Content can be in both platforms because again, it's decentralized and you may find some familiar faces right here. And the cool thing is that in these, uh, um, these sites, you can also just like support this channel and give uh, the coins that you earn by watching stuff. You watch stuff and you get coins and then you can give it to the creators or tip them or leave comments. So it's pretty much the same. And we're moving the Blender uh, YouTube. No, not moving. We are adding the Blender channel there. So we're going to see more stuff. 
you're gonna see more stuff over there. So okay, let's uh, block a, <laughs> a spammer on the chat and let's continue. All right, that was one announcement that we uh, soon I started the process, but there is 800 videos that have to be moved and yeah, it's quite a big uh, move. So um, it's gonna be automatically. Uh, YouTube is gonna still gonna go, of course, but it's gonna be automatically synced, so everything will be shared there as well. It's gonna be it's a blockchain stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's blockchain actually. If you look at the what is library, you're gonna see um, it's a it's a protocol. You can read more here. It's a protocol. It's uh, decentralized. It's uh, by the creator. The protocol I think is by the creator of uh, Bitcoin. Even I think this is mentioned here. Bit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You see here, it's a blockchain technology developed by the creator of Bitcoin. So it's in good hands, apparently, and it's open source. Anyway, let's continue. The second announcement that I have, it's uh, if you're a developer, it's, it's about a blog post that uh, Sivren, one of the developers at Blender made. It's, um, it's some of, uh, it's a little script that he uses to uh, make it easier to pull branches and to to review patches basically how to review uh, he as a developer has to review patches from other people but if you're a user and you if you compile your own blender but you are not technically a um, a uh, a developer make your own stuff you can still make use of this patch because that it will help you to um, test stuff you know when you have uh, when you go to to blender.org and you see like um, D something something like uh, here in differentials you see some like improve crisp pencil to define less resolution for example this is a patch by Antonio Vasquez and you can get this uh, this ID and test it locally with the help of this, um, this script or you can just uh, go to the wiki blender wiki and you're gonna find more info about how to compile your own blender and how to apply these patches all right that's maybe a bit advanced we i know we have people from all over the world we have people with all kinds of backgrounds some developers some artists so i try to make it friendly for everybody um but let's go into what matters this week it's a what's new in blender let's start with the section favorite section of blender 2.92 the main topic i think in 2022 together with the asset browser and others but i think um the topic of geometry nodes will really make a a big splash in the community so let's see what's new in in geometry nodes one thing that will mark a difference will really make it um, make it very special what is it what is what is it is the object info node so far has been working in uh, global space what does it mean it means global space is the the whole world space like the global coordinates in in the entire world so when you rotate the object the coordinates didn't uh, follow <laughs> so it wasn't it was really really handicapped because yeah you could do only so much right you have to play with global coordinates not anymore now you can see that um, you can already for example in this demo now by default it's gonna use the global coordinates the object info is gonna take the global coordinates so you can actually rotate the points and scale and perform all the um, yeah, it, it behaves more <laughs> as you would expect it because it uses local space and not global space. That's quite a concept to grasp for when you start with 3D, right? When you, it's like, what is global space? What is local space? Then you have normal space, tangent space, and then custom space orientations. Yeah, yeah, this 3D thing is uh, tricky when you start. Um, luckily, there is a lot of training out there. When does 2.92 release is uh, asking here. James Rodriguez is asking. So whenever you wonder when is a release happening or like one of the upcoming release releases, you can go to developer.blender.org or um, and then here on the sidebar, you're gonna find the um, releases that are active at the moment. For example, 2.83 is was released last year, but it's still active. 2.91 
also is the official release and 2.92 is the one that is uh, currently under development if you click on any of this you're gonna find a uh, roadmap where you can see the stages so right now we are in the second stage beacon 2 where um, it's mainly improving and stabilizing blender beacon 3 the one i mentioned that we are in like in two days starts in two days is when the back fixing only can happen so you there there shouldn't be any risky changes then um, by then and next month at the end of next month we should see the release happening somewhere around these dates so i would say 24 maybe a bit later you know there's really no rush um, but this is a, a tentative date hopefully it will happen there but sometimes it happens that it can be delayed for a few days if there is some important bug fixes to be done um, remember we it's not a race we are not trying to like put it out um, it's mainly to have a stable software in the past it happened that it was delayed maybe a week because it's better to just release once and do it right than having to have a 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.3 releases let's continue will you again do a live release i'm, I'm checking out the the chat here live release i i don't know should i should i hype it and make it a live release the thing is, with 2.91, did I do it with 2.91 or with 2.90? Um, it will be very tricky. But I can do it. I mean, I'm doing live here. I just need to press the button and go live. It's probably gonna break um, the site. But it's fun, you know? You have to hype it and then deal with the consequences. People that use Blender over Steam, the Windows Store, or snap they don't get any of these issues you know what it's time to move to the next section and the title of this video vse stands for video sequence editor 2.0 stands for <laughs> it's time for blender video sequence editor to get all out of the uh, dark ages and move into um, yeah get, get the attention it deserves i know many other areas in blender deserve the attention but let's tackle one at a time is this is the job of richard antelik he is being he's hired by the blender foundation he worked for blender um, to work on only on the video sequence editor he's been doing some back fixes in the past but it's mainly main focus is the video sequence editor so that's super nice here this is one of the many uh, changes that are coming but uh, it, it's not about the changes that happened <laughs> but it's more about what's planned so for example this is a smaller uh, one but it's part of a big picture hide cache settings and adjust defaults sound simple hide cache settings why, why are you hiding stuff why should we hide stuff well they're not hidden completely they are still available if you have uh, developer extras enabled because they were mainly for um, for developers however um, the idea is that it will um, by default it will have better default but the better settings that should make caching uh, better but also under the hood there will be a lot of improvements in cache itself this one for example Ad adjust default cache settings for all files to store raw and final images what does it mean let's go to the task every time you see this uh, these kind of posts for example you can uh, you have the commit right with this weird number it's just this is just the hash of the commit itself this is the action then you have um, a task a task is a can be a design or a to do it's, it's a task it has to be performed then there is the differential revision this is the actual code the differentials the ones that start with capital d and then a number those are that that's the actual code that is going to be reviewed and sometimes they can take months years even to be um to be reviewed and and, and gone over and yeah updated um in this particular one there's not a lot of discussion going on um but Ah, there is actually some discussion going on some patches updates and stuff then uh, the action happens in the task 
in the task you're gonna find hey this is part of a bigger picture this is part of blender video sequencer 2.0 performance and cache system one of the parts of the 2.0 uh, project so you know it's part of a bigger bigger family performance is one of the areas in the sequencer that i um that i am hoping it will be tackled um like i always hope it would be tackled first and it is so i'm super happy about that because without performance no matter how many features you have it's just not fun imagine if ev was super slow then what's the point of having it in real in the viewport if if you can handle it in real time or or cycles or i mean performance is always before anything first for example, so video sequencer cache. I can, here you can read more about, um, you, you can go just simply to this task, to it's 8278, and uh, read the whole the whole thing about the types of caching, the disk cache folder, the size limit, the in-memory cache. So there is some cache that will take place in uh, memory, so in RAM, or also in the disk, you know, for larger storage, for, for all your images or videos to be cached in the, um, in the, disk itself because you have more space there's different levels of caching there is cache referencing cache resolution there is a change here that is coming up that i want to see and um, here this is a task progress so here you can see what already has been done and what's coming up so what has been done here cache performance optimization that sounds good this was actually added a few weeks back so uh, it's already closed but this one is a hey, it's an optimization it's already um, a, quite an improvement however don't store proxy images in cache user level design levels of caching here there are for example this change this is pretty recent store raw images in cache which means that it's an, it's an improvement on performance so previously raw images were not cached if the image wasn't pre-processed this would cause the issue that the image had to be read from the disk on every redraw like redraw so when you change frame when you change the setting when you change anything it will have to reread the image from the disk yeah no wonder why the sequencer is so slow until this change before this change once you have effects yeah it gets uh, more tricky because then uh you can't really cache that um um like from the from the raw images it's already a modification so it, you need a different kind of caching but hey it's an improvement then this one that it has a patch and it's not applied yet this one is the one i'm most excited about because it's related to cache resolution look look at this video i have here so the task is called render in the size nearest to the preview image so bad news currently in the C in the video sequence editor when you are previewing when you preview your your video the one you're editing uh, no matter if your window if, if like super large or tiny if, if you make the window this small um the the preview this small blender will calculate everything as if it was the the resolution you're working on so you had to go and change it in the scene which is then you have to remember to change it back yeah not great look at this beautiful video that shows the um the difference so there is one setting that is called like uh, automatic and here this is at this resolution then it makes the window small and you can see that it actually goes faster so it's calculating faster and when you make it larger of course it has to calculate more resolution so it's a bit slower so actually this is how blender runs at the moment so this speed at this size is how it would render at all sizes um but um the advantage is that now if you just want to have a small preview it will be just as fast um no it will be faster if you have an automatic proxy when the the smaller you have the window super nice isn't that great are you disappointed that you were expecting this or maybe there was some placebo effect that no if i make the window smaller it actually goes faster but no uh yeah it never went faster now it is now it's getting a bit better a lot better i would say so yeah 
Um, you can see the excitement here by Sergey Sharvin and giving some notes. It's super fun to read this, especially if you want to learn how Blender is developed and how transparent everything is. And if you want to learn yourself how to make changes in Blender, this is this is gold. This is literally how the developers work together um, online. Super awesome. Let's see, yeah, you can even see the code. You can look at the code and what changed and the settings and here there is a bug and something to do maybe with the annotations. So yeah, and then you can see some idiots giving a love token here, <laughs> making noise in a task where it doesn't really help. Giving love to the task is a nice gesture, but the problem of giving love or any kind of reactions is that if you go to his profile, the author of this, then you get these things you get the the profile of the the developer so other people can come here developers can come here and to see what's happening and then you have this noise you have my face or my character's face um giving a, a love token and then it's nice but the problem is that yeah it gives it makes noise when you're reading like if i go to i don't know like pablo duar or other popular people it's probably gonna be impossible to find what the guys are working on because of all this noise so keep your love tokens uh like for the things that you really really like all right um so that's it with the levels of uh, with caching but um just keep browsing you can click here for the performance task and here is what it's coming there is a to-do list already like seeking videos is rather slow it feels 2.2 times slower to seek in vlc with the same video file so so this is the reference vlc that's super nice then uh, color strip stuff moving images resolutions so yeah it's this is more or less where you have to look at for the upcoming Blender video sequence editor changes, which is part of the big projects of Blender, 2 point, uh, Blender 2021. Everything notes, like we just mentioned, but the asset browser and the sequencer. Super excited about this. Let's move on. Let me have a, a drink here of my mate. Let's, um, okay, so the other changes maybe are not gonna change your life but they're still worth mentioning mesh mesh editing so this is a, a new support for the symmetrize tool so now supports shape keys so the symmetrize is a this tool that makes um, one part of your mesh symmetric with the other now it also supports shape keys so super nice then switching uh, topics again to the um, to another section which is the compositor a few day episodes back maybe a couple of weeks back i mentioned a new um, a change that was done in the compositor the node the king node um, when when doing when using the keying node for example to replace a background uh, with a, a green screen with a background you had to fiddle with the um, with the alpha you had to um, pre multiply and multiply and then uh, do the green screen and then change the alpha again pre multiply again so um, that was a fix however the other nodes were not affected by this change until now actually this um, pre-multiplying of the color of the king nodes is done in the other nodes so this patch so whatever what, what you're gonna find now in master in, in blender 2.92 is that the same concept is applied to the crypto mat node channel mat chroma mat color mat difference mat distance and luminance uh, luminance mat nodes this breaks the old files though so you have to be um, if you're gonna use this in production you have to go and uh, fix the uh, fix this by yourself then the set alpha node has a new uh, a mode parameter this parameter changes the logic of to apply mask the alpha on the RGB alpha channels to the of the input or only replace the alpha channel wait 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 so replace alpha or apply mask I think the wording is a bit uh, confusing here, but... 
One, it replaces the whole alpha channel like in the old behavior and now you can use apply mask. Okay, yeah, okay, on the RGB channels of the input color. So I think the one you want for now is apply mask. The other one is the old behavior. Um, the replace mode is automatically set for all the files. So in this case for the set alpha, you don't have to update your old, um, your old uh, files. Should be safe. All right, let's go into the user interface side of things. Have you ever used group nodes? You probably have and you probably notice or maybe you didn't notice, but the group nodes, I don't remember who made the group nodes, um, but the UI, the user interface for that it, for, for, for adding your own custom inputs and outputs, it was so weird. It had, it was like, like, I don't know, it was designed, I don't know, before we had UI, no, we had UI lists. But anyway, this is how it used to look. Actually, I don't have a, a old, a previous version, but actually in 2.7, it was the same. And um, I can just go here and make a, a group. So if, if I make a group, um, this hasn't changed much actually, so um, for example if I have the node here or oh, it did change oh I mean oh I mean blended internal of course I wanted I let's go to the compositor here so this is this is better so for example if I had I don't know like any node and then the UI it was like this so it was so weird it had the this was the same in 2.91 I just don't have it here but basically you you could choose the inputs and the outputs that's fine but there were these two lists uh, they were next to each other and blender doesn't have this doesn't know about this kind of layout so you could actually change the height of each one individually and uh, to add a new entry, you'll have to click here. Whereas everywhere in Blender, even in the old versions of Blender, you would have this uh, UI list, you know, with a plus and a minus um, to remove. But uh, for some reason, this UI had it down here. And then to remove it, you'll have to click in the X on the other side of the UI. Yeah, like, it was it was super weird. Alien, alien. It didn't look like Blender. It was something else. Not anymore. Thanks to Hans Goody, a uh, developer that has been working on UI stuff, property search, modifier, layouts, and more recently, geometry nodes. Now this looks like something from Blender, finally. It looked like, it, it looks like entries, yeah, inputs, then you have plus and minus, where you would expect it. You can sort it where you would expect it here. You have the name and all the settings for the inputs in one place. Then the outputs, the same for the outputs. So you have the um, um, the names, you can change it here. You can also double click. And there was, I, I left one comment here. Um, so I left one comment saying about not having the, um, here, let's see. Mm, yeah, I was like, yeah, we shouldn't have... I was a bit grumpy here. I was just like, I would hide the name field because it. we, we never expose it, really. Like, the name field to change the name of a vertex group, of a shape key, of a UV map, or a vertex color, it's never exposed. A Blender user, anybody that has used Blender in the in, ever, knows that to change the vertex group, you have to either uh, control click or double click, either one. There is never a name field. So I was like, well, why do we have a name field in this uh, in this new layout? Well, it's there because we had it. <laughs> it was there, it, it was there before. So there is really no harm in exposing it. Um, exposing it makes it inconsistent with the rest of Blender. However, Blender already itself is inconsistent because there are a few cases where we are using this widget, the UI list, and we, for example, when you open a new file, um, so like here, for example, um, the you can rename some of 
them, like the favorites you can rename, but the system you can't rename it. So there is no way to tell if you can rename one or the other. So yeah, Blender is inconsistent. And even if you, <laughs> there, you can, in the tooltip it says double click to rename, but you can't rename it. This, this should be fixed actually, we should, we should change that. Um, so yeah, I think maybe we should just expose the, l let me know what you think. We, we, I think we should expose the name field in this, um, for this as well, like down here. Yes, it's gonna use a bit more space. Yes, you have to scroll maybe more. However, it's more discoverable for people that are just starting using Blender and it gives them, it's like, oh, you can actually rename it. Um, Still, I don't know how would you survive using Blender <laughs> without renaming these things, you know? Um, so, but maybe for consistency. And also the rename function should be in right click. You should be able to right click and rename, but there, we don't have that here. So let me know. Consistency or fancy, you have to learn to double click. Like accessibility and consistency or yeah, if it was my app, if I was making it just for me, I would I would remove all the, the settings. I would just yeah. If you hold Control, it does this thing. If you hold Alt and Shift, and but because Blender has to be accessible for everybody, I think it's um, it's better to make it more accessible. Accessibility, consistency, and accessibility. Double click or right click to rename. Yes, this will be. This won't be removed. You can you can have both. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm not saying removing one or the other. I'm just saying that the name field should be exposed for other uh, for, for other for this for the face maps, vertex colors, UV maps. So you will still have the double click, but then new users are gonna see like, oh, you can actually name things. Um, so both. Yeah. No, no. I'm I'm just saying both. Um. I would rather not display the name. Yeah, some people would rather not. Maybe a pencil button to rename. No, no, icons, we already have too many icons. We have icons to set the render, the active, um, the ones to be rendered. Some have a lock icon, some have a slider and a check icon. So I don't think we can add, unless you mouse over and it, 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 it makes a edit icon. Maybe. Anyway. Making an add-on? <laughs> no, these things are shouldn't be add-ons. These things are native. Alright, uh, next. This improvement in the um, weight paint, sample weight paint tool by Juan Fran is gonna make your life easier when you um, when you're sampling weight. When you're in weight paint mode, that is um like when you're painting weight on your vertices, there is a tool for sample the weight, but it was never visible anywhere, which was, was the weight. You have to actually click on it um, and just see it change. Now it's gonna show up here in the header. So thank you, Juan Fran. Makes uh, life a little easier. And uh, Juan Fran also worked in another smaller patch, which is adding an icon that was missing for the um, for the cursor. So before the, the sample, <laughs> Um, wait, it looked like a cursor, like it's just a 3D cursor. Now it looks like an actual sample icon. So small thing, but makes life easier. The same as this change on EV Cryptomat, the, um, the, the store hashes in the render result metadata. What is the metadata? It's the info that gets saved with the, uh, with your renders. There is already some that Blender puts in, like the camera, the scene, the render time. Cycles even has its own metadata that gets added to the renders, such as the uh, render time for the render layer, for cycles, for samples. I think you can even expose that. But now they will also expose the uh, this data for CryptoMat. So if you're using a different compositor that is not Blender, for example, if you use Nuke to composite Blender stuff, you are going to be able to see this which is handy. Yes, for interoperability. Next feature. 
delete keyframes shortcut now um, so this is a fix but a feature so somebody reported that uh, custom delete keyframes uh, shortcut still requires confirmation so somebody made a uh, shortcut for the delete keyframes in the uh, graph editor I think or in the or in the dope sheet yes and it was um, it was requiring the confirmation uh, regardless the, the like do you want to delete do you want to delete and that can be very annoying so this fix is gonna make it so um, you can have two operators one with a confirmation and one without in blender the X shortcut the one that is closer to your left hand it asks you for confirmation just to be sure but then if you um, if you really want to delete it without confirmation you can just press delete and that one doesn't give a pop-up because it's harder to reach so if you got there it means that you really wanted to delete it that's the way it works however in the uh, key map settings of the delete delete anything so uh, for example if I go to the key map and then I search for like delete delete keyframes for example um, you're gonna find that there is a setting here that is called confirm this is the pop-up dialog for confirmation and you can see that <clears throat> the delete shortcut the one with the delete key doesn't have it enabled um, that's how you can make it for example if you want to search key binding x for removing if you want for example every time you remove an object in the viewport when you press x you don't want this pop-up to appear you just go to here to the preferences you search whoops you search for key binding x and then you look for the object mode delete there you go and then you can just um, remove you can click here on confirm and then it means that the X shortcut for object delete in object mode is not gonna it shouldn't ask me for uh, confirmation so I press X bam, it's gone it's gone it's gone so yeah next um, For people asking questions, by the way, we have a thread on Blender, oops, blend, bl blender.today or the community Blender today, where you can see the thread that was made by Blender Defender. Thank you, Blender Defender. There is a few questions that I'm going to be answering in a moment when I finish the uh, changes that were done recently in Blender, such as key map enable repeat for make edge face operator so um, you know that you can repeat the command so for example if I move this cube a uh, let's just just a little bit to the right I can go into edit repeat last and then I can basically just uh, re yeah repeat the last operation and now um, it will take the settings that I was using and it's super smart However, it doesn't work with every operator. In this case, um, the make edge face operator for like setting flags, it wasn't, uh, it didn't accept this uh, redo. Now it does. So, super nice. Thank you, Hans, for working on it. The other update is an optimization. Actually, there are many optimizations. Once, um, I only saved this one, but there is uh, more in the surface deform modifier, should be faster now. And this one in particular improves the um, cloth simulations when using um, pinned triangles, like uh, when you use a big area as pinned. Pinned is when you uh, mark some vertices to not move when you're performing a simulation. Now this should be much faster. So according to uh, Alexander Gavrilov, it says, um, yeah, it adds an early check for triangles, which significantly speeds up certain use cases with big fully pinned areas that happen to overlap a collider. So yay for optimizations. And uh, last but not least, the GLTF importer now supports Draco um, compression decoding. So now you can also uh, read Draco compressed files and there is a fix for vertex exporting vertex color in Draco compressed files. 
then um, and that's it now there is another improvement in gltf that will create placeholders for files that cannot be loaded so it's a good to have a reference and the last one is a shout out to a developer that has been pushing a few fixes lately and i've never mentioned you in the live stream so i just wanted to give a shout out to p pi Lanningham. so thank you for working on it on on blender like adding stuff if you follow the blender um the geometry notes or the everything notes um, channel on blender chat you're also gonna see developers from the community contributing to the project and that it's super nice heartwarming to see you know the community involvement in blender um, and in this one in particular thank you it's just a fix well just a fix <laughs> it's quite a fix for um for the drawing of the core profile there were some some weird drawing there and he went and fixed it and it's a, not a small fix you can see here takes time you know you have to actually maybe the the, the code it's just a few lines but you don't have to find it you have to compile you have to test it you have to publish the review here you have to get the review by the developers so it's super nice that people go through all that travel and uh, some people get hired <laughs> later and then they can't work at blender for blender with blender time to start the question section question section i need a and I, I need music i need a transition music to this because i what what is a can I a good music for for a transition for uh, moving into the questions? Let me know and uh, I will try to prepare it for next week. For now, I can start with the star by Mario. Hello, Pablo. I have two questions. Uh, says slow kid. Are there any? You're not so slow. You're the first one to uh, ask. So, hey, um, are there any news on the Google Summer of Code project's custom menus and many lights samples? After the end of the Summer of Code, we didn't have any news by the developers and nothing got implemented. So, the Google Summer of Code custom menus, I've seen some uh, commits after the fact, like after the whole um, Summer of Code project happened. I don't know where to follow. I think maybe the best place would be to follow in depth talk and um, search for like a custom menu custom menus here yeah weekly reports and see maybe we can just check here what's the status um hopefully it gets picked up again but yeah no that's 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 the only way i know to to see the status of these projects unfortunately that's the nature of google summit of code sometimes uh, sometimes they work great sometimes we find even like super talented people that just like knock it out of the park uh, how they say and um, some other people maybe they it's it's just bad timing or there's other circumstances or maybe the project wasn't right for them or even the mentor didn't they didn't get well together you know there are many reasons so yeah next um how is it going the reshaping of right click select it's going great well i mean to me it's going great um so what he means here what slokid means is that this website that you see here this this is called blender.community it's running a software that we wrote together with francesco city many years ago we made this is version 3 and now we're working on version 4. so this version so the version first actually if, if you go to where is it is it it's it, yeah you don't have to go it's uh it's in it's in uh, github there are a few releases in the past and the first version it, it was just just news it was just blender today and there was no community it was just blender today it was just today and then this software got picked up by right click select and they used it for voting uh um, sections then this um the, we got the idea with Francesco of joining both, you know, Blender community and like Blender today and right click select. And this is how it got born. Then at some point we decided to use uh, under the hood to add more communities and to under the hood use the same system that the Blender cloud was using back in the past, in, in the past, because that will give us free updates and improvements 
um, but yeah, it it was it ended up being too much overhead to have the entire Blender cloud system for something so simple as Blender community posting, voting, and that kind of stuff. So here's where um, the version number four of the software called Dilo it comes into place. We are making it from scratch with all that we learned. This is this is two years ago, one and a half. Um, with all that we learned with uh, Francesco and we're making it from scratch and we are making it not based on anything else but on what we need. So right click select, what do you need? Okay, um, merging of posts. Okay, we code it and we make it and everything will be really ad hoc and okay, Graphical is another huge um, community that, that needs support right right now graphical it works it has download it has comments but maybe there could be even more features there are other communities that we are do that we want to um that we want to add we want to add an add-ons community we want to add a uh maybe i want to personally have a themes community people where can share the themes making tools so yeah we're working on that and um i mean it's it really looks like this so far but it's it's a new system so I mean, I, I, I could see, I could try to have it running. Um, Blender, Blender community. Yeah. Um, maybe uh, work on community. <laughs> this is how I call it. This is my work environment. Work on community and then I can run server. And um, right now it's maybe going to be a little bit disappointed because disappointing because it looks exactly the same. But uh, to me, this is this is a new system, basically. So yeah, this is super basic. This is a made up, um, but this is one day of work on top of the work we did in the past. But this is one day to get it here, to have the community, the concept of community. Actually, you can have multiple communities, communities with their own uh, theme color and with their own um, categories and. Um, anyways, I know it's not very exciting now, but it is exciting for me because. This is only the beginning and we are going to work on it on our evenings and weekends with Francesco and hopefully we can use some of our work time during the day, but we are so busy with other stuff that, uh, yeah, it's going to take a little bit, but we are um, committed to make it work and have it running as soon as possible. It's going to be, uh, it's open source, so hopefully once everything is a bit more, you know, in shape, taking shape, we can ask people that know a little bit of Python, Django, CSS, HTML, JavaScript to help us and uh, make make it this place awesomer. So yeah, it, it's going great. Oh, I, I'm not even... Yeah, you see this notification? Shouldn't say that. It should just point you, make you log in. Shouldn't give you an error. Now it gives you an error. So this is why you haven't seen any new updates lately. In the past for blender.community because we are making it um, much much better easier to maintain a good transition will be next news <laughs> next news click click ah the music transition yeah maybe all right and the second question um Hi, Pablo. I wanted to ask what happened to the retopology overlay task? It's still being developed or was it abandoned? Currently, one of the major problems with retopology is not being able to see the retopology mesh because it can be hidden by the high poly um, mesh. Yes, I think that's. Um, no, that this topic, yeah, it's being. Um, it's under the radar. Um, we have Julian Casper in the, in the team at the Blender Studio who also was pushing for this idea to be developed further. But um, at the moment, yeah, I don't think anybody currently is working on it. Like Jeroen was working on the Cryptomat um, stuff for Eevee, the one that I just mentioned, he was doing that. So yeah, I don't know who's gonna pick up this task at the moment, um, but I mean, I think even retopology is so important that it should it should be almost be its its own mode, right? Like you should have like a retopo mode, and then um, have its own tools, its own 
shading options. It should, it should, should have its own everything. Super important and we don't have it yet. Um, but yeah, you can always poke developers to ask the status of things. Next option um, here. I cannot upload. I'm gonna log in. <laughs> My Blender ID. Oh, by the way, in the next, uh, oh, I need to authorize. In the new Blender community, we are going to remove um, login with, um, we want to remove login with Facebook and, uh, and Gmail. Um, just being able to log in with the Blender ID because it, yeah, in the past it was giving issues with uh, spam. Like right now we have spam here and they're all Gmail accounts so that we cannot confirm and blender id has confirmation so yeah and it's called blender community it makes sense that you need to log in with the blender id so that will make it easier for us because uh, with logging with facebook or with um, gmail gives way too much spam so yeah damian winishenko says hi pablo mary oh i this i already replied this one Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Thank you, Damian. The apply button on the awesome and fantastic geometry nodes doesn't convert scattered geometry node uh, into the real instances. Will it be implemented on release 2.92? Let me tell you that I think it will because it's already, um, there is already a task and um, it's already, where did I see it? Oh, I saw it in my, yeah, I think I saw it in my email. <laughs> um, I have it here, geometry nodes. It was in developer. Um, make instance real. Yeah, exactly. This is the one. So let me copy the link and go here and paste it. And this is the task. Make instances real when applying the modifier. So it's under review and it was committed on Saturday. Hans, please don't work on the weekend. Chill. I, well, I mean, we're very close to, to master for 2.92 to be closed. So like to be, yeah, you know, you can't add new things. So developers are probably want to get as much as possible into 2.92. Otherwise you have to wait until 2.93. So it makes sense. Um, but yeah, there is already a patch. So you can see here it's getting a lot of love and it's going to make it. So when you apply, when you go to control A, it's gonna uh, make instances real for real. So yeah, you can follow the discussion there. It's in the patch 10,059. Next question, it's um, by Sean Adams. Hi Pablo, I would like to, I would like a feature to ignore face normals for a volume shader on a mesh so that both inside and outside faces shade as outside in cycles. <laughs> Reason being is when using displacement vectors on a mesh to make clouds, parts of the mesh become inverted dynamically and are shaded as transparent only due to, the, to being an inside face which can't be overridden. No one in the forums has overcome this issue and it will greatly speed up cloud generation using dynamic meshes instead of vector displacement within a volume shader. Uh, but wouldn't... Well, first, I don't know, isn't this double shade? That's why double sided is for, like the setting. You probably already know and if you ask in the forums and people said um, they didn't say anything, it's probably because... Where is double, double sided? Um, if people already said, um, I can't find it, uh, anyway, ah, I, we have search, double, 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 anyway, oh, oh no, wait, this was removed, right? Yeah. Part of the mesh become inverted dynamically. One and as speed up cloud generation using dynamic meshes. And but wouldn't it make sense? I mean, now I'm giving you backface scaling. Yeah, but it's off by default. 
right? Back face, yeah, it's off by default. Hmm. Or... Yeah, it's not even, so... How... Hmm. The... I mean... The other answer I can give you is to maybe use a different setup for making the dynamic clouds, uh, clouds with the, based on dynamic meshes, right? Wouldn't it be better to just use a volume object with a new Blender 2.92, um, no, 2.91 volume to mesh modifiers or mesh to volume modifiers? Um, that would help. But um, yeah, no, sorry, I don't have enough experience. Maybe someone here in the chat can give an answer, but I'm, I'm, I don't have enough experience in the area. Ron asks, hello, just wondering, is the compositor gonna become real time for VFX and animations anytime? My answer is yes, because your question was anytime. <laughs> um, I don't have a time frame to tell you, but the goal for the compositor is to become real time. Um, something like Eevee, but for the compositor. Um, next question. I recently came across an EV displacement system in development. How likely do you think it will be implemented? Which, what is it? Parallax occlusion mapping. Yeah, this was time ago. Well, the developer um, that made this task is Clema. He made EV. He's a creator of EV. So if he made it, he edited it here. I really hope this like it's gonna make it it's in the roadmap however the focus for Clema nowadays is to work on uh, Vulkan implementation like in well right now it's back fixing as you can see here but also to um, to work on Vulkan moving blender from OpenGL to Vulkan so that comes first and then comes the features I can't wait for just freaking Vulkan to be in so the focus can move into <laughs> giving features again um, because everything is, um, yeah, everything is, yeah, like, if you have only one person that made, that work on Eevee, then gotta make choices. All right, uh, it's six o'clock. Let's do six, five, six o'clock, six questions. What do you think? Six questions, all right. Delta ask, hey, Paula, super off topic question. Can you share a bit more info about your mate? <laughs> My mate, this, this mate. Um, how you make it, drink it, etc. So you, you said that good mate is expensive, then not so good mate is cheaper. How do you spot good mate and bad mate? Um, the problem? No, I don't. I don't. I, I don't think it's expensive or, or cheaper. I, maybe I said it, but I, I think it's whatever you like the most. It's like tea. There is good tea and not so good tea, but it at the end of the day is what you prefer, what you like. I think that everything applies to. It applies to everything. So, uh, yeah, no, maybe it's off topic to, to share it here in this live stream. Maybe uh, uh, follow on, on me on Twitch and we make a Twitch about creating, having mate. Maybe that would be a good idea. Um, but yeah, basically mate is just like tea leaves, mate leaves in one of these pots. Um, and then just hot water, not boiling, but hot water. Um, and uh, yeah, you can search, you can get more info online or we can do a special about mate. What is mate? Mate <laughs> is yerba mate. It's a kind of beverage that we drink in um, Argentina, in um, Uruguay, in Paraguay, in the south of South America. You can, oh, I wasn't sharing here, yerba mate. Uh, so yeah, it's a, it's a plant. And they became very popular in um, in the in the world. Actually, there is even a one monster drink that is called Club Mate. Don't don't even compare it with Mate. It does have nothing to do with Mate. It's it's like a soda. Uh, it's yeah, it's terrible. I mean, it's, it's probably a good drink, but it's terrible if you compare it with the actual Mate. And look at he has like a gaucho, which is not really a gaucho yeah I don't know you know what a gaucho is there you go. Argentino well it kind of looks similar but yeah 
yeah, there are many interpretations of uh, <laughs> of gauchos. <laughs> All right. Um, I wanted to make a gaucho for one of the episodes of Coming and as I remember. I never got to do it. Or at least to design it. Maybe that would be a good task for me to do. All right. Let's, um, let's continue. Do you cook pancakes with mate, Palo? I think I should make a, a, a just chatting on Twitch um, about, uh, about what I... <laughs> uh, about how I drink uh, mate. It's a... Uh, you can follow there if you want. All right. Um, let's continue. That didn't count. Let's do six more. Hi, thanks for the live. Any news on the uh, implicit surface skinning implementation? Not that I know. Unfortunately, I know this is a feature that Ton is pushing a lot. Um, like he's asking, he's poking the developers like, hey, when are you gonna add this? But uh, no, not that I know. Unfortunately, no. Not not recently, at least. Maybe I'm I'm wrong. Maybe if somebody in the community has seen any updates on that, can comment. But I haven't personally. Fred asks, "Hi, Pablo. I know if it's a feature request, but <laughs> I know it's a feature request. So okay, acknowledging it from the beginning. Cool. But." why don't we have the option to have new created geometry in smooth shaded and auto smooth on that's what everybody does everyone does after creating new objects anyway just to fill in the question for today have a good uh, time stay healthy and best wishes to everybody at blender thank you best wishes to you so okay um why don't we have an option yeah maybe it could be an option why it's not by default um so when you so for example when you have a mesh um when you have a mesh like a sphere oh what happened i can hear myself okay <laughs> ah yes i had my <laughs> my channel in the background okay when you have a mesh and you um, you have for example you make it shade smooth and you enable the auto smooth on um, when the when the mesh has a certain angle uh, a certain shape then the edges become hard edges you know super nice especially for shapes like a cylinder if you have a cylinder and then you auto smooth with this option then it's already, uh, yeah, it already looks great. However, this auto smooth setting, it has to recalculate every time you transform. So when you're moving, you're, you're, you're transforming your mesh, or even if you have a have it rigged and your rigging changes the shape of this of the cylinder, then it's um, it's slow. You know, it has to recalculate the normals every time. So that's why it's not on by default. However, for people that really want it, that don't care about performance or have a super beefy computer and don't care, maybe it should be a setting that every time you create a new uh, object, maybe it could be a setting, yeah. I agree. Actually, once I made a patch that it will add an option here that was called Shade Smooth uh, or Shade Auto Smooth. Yeah, shade auto smooth. I have a patch going around. I don't know where I put it, but I I remember um, it was an operator basically that would do the same. But uh, should be an operator, should be a setting, or should be both. Let me know in the questions below. Um, Javier Carreras from Argentina asks, "Hi Pablo, how is it going? Hope you have started the year well. I have a query." about the properties editor. In the workspace part, there is a section to enable or disable add-ons, but there is no way to have it synchronized with the ones in preferences and only deactivate the ones you don't want. I think it would be great to have the sidebar organized and create custom workspaces for tasks um, that I would do on each one. But if I have to reactivate all or almost all, it becomes somewhat cumbersome. Um, let me see if I understand correctly. So the setting that you mentioned is that if you go to the tool 
section in each one of the workspaces and then you go here workspace or in the properties is also available here but let's go to the properties to make it so if you go here in the workspace section you can filter which of the add-ons you don't want here like the ones you want to um, have or not have so by default it's showing all the add-ons but for example maybe if you want if you have a few that are um, taking too much space in the sidebar because I don't know for some reason every add-on developer wants to be in the spotlight and wants to have their settings in the viewport even the add-ons that don't have anything to do with the viewport add things to the viewport so at some point it becomes unreadable and that on top of the bug that blender because it's a bug it's not a design decision that the tabs get too small and you can't even read the text <clears throat> it makes for a very crappy experience so this option to filter the the add-ons that you want or not in this workspace comes re really handy however your question is that there's no way to have it synchronized with the ones in preferences Wait, what do you mean in ones in preferences the ones here in the add-ons well it's gonna only show the ones that you have active so this should this is what you see here so you have to have the add-on enabled first to know which ones you want here so they are synchronized right if i remove the sapling tree add-on yeah it goes away so or amaranth or the other ones so i i don't i don't think i get it first you have to have the add-on enabled and then you have to remove it because then you have you need to know otherwise every time like this only checks for the add-ons that are registered which is fast if you have to check for the add-ons that are on your hard drive it's gonna get more tricky that's why blender has a refresh button here and it's do it automatically i think because otherwise we'll have to be checking your hard drive for changes all the time um let's uh go to question number four <clears throat> returning topic line drawing supporting blender is limited yes freestyle is single threaded yes doesn't handle particles, unfortunately. Crashes on large, large files, yeah, okay. We made the point that freestyle is not the best. Line art also stumbles on big files, being painfully slow. Lacks freestyle refinements. Even uh, I maintain new builds on Graphical, thank you. Um, I'm a patron for beer development. Purchase line add-ons of, of mixed usefulness and lament the lack of real-time line rendering solution. Make freestyle multi-threaded cache results and allow editing of solutions on the cache in real time and let it work with memory more efficiently without crashing, please. So this is a feature request. <laughs> Make freestyle multi-threaded. Uh, no, I think the best way to move forward, like freestyle is not in the viewport, it's not live. I think freestyle is great, but the future is, is real time. So I don't think freestyle is the future at the moment. And we should just work in better on making line art faster. Uh, make it compatible with Grease Pencil because Grease Pencil lines are already work fine and they can be composite on. So the future, I think, should be to have um, to have everything working with line art, not freestyle. Um, but yeah. Now, I don't know what to say. It's a feature request. I know it's uh, it's in the it's in the list of things, um, but uh, I think the future is to improve Grease Pencil and make it kind of related to line art. Because if Gris, if Grease Pencil gets if, if both systems use the same render under the hood, then everybody benefits, right? Be user users of Grease Pencil and users of line art, um, which is the problem with having a different render engine like Veer because it's a different render engine right you have to make everything again for that render engine and yeah you have the different material system or you have to be compatible with it and uh, or add-ons so also yeah they're not built in you know so it's up to the developers to update it um, so i think the future is to you know put our hopes and dreams in line art um but it's not even in master yet so it's it's also one of the reasons why it's not getting so much attention but eventually it will be so uh, i i hope that for blender 3 it will be part of of uh, blender 
even before, I hopefully to 93, but yes, I just say Blender 3, so we have more room to breathe. Question number three. Hi, Pablo, how are you? Cheers from Brazil, and thanks for the amazing show. I would like to ask if there's any news or plans about the new interactive nodes. Uh, no, only news that I've got is that um, that is super high priority, like uh, one of it's one of Ton's streams, and he recently shared um, uh, internally the hopes for the 2020s, the decade that's just started now. Depends if you count from zero for one, <laughs> but the 2020s hopefully will have interactive uh, mode back. It's one of the hopes. But you know, it takes developers, it takes experienced developers and it takes passionate developers to make something like that. Question number two. Well, actually I should go to the bottom because those are the questions that were uh, asked first. Okay, I'm gonna do this one and then I jump to the bottom. Hey Pablo, I'm wondering if you knew of any way to add checkboxes to custom node groups, either in geometry nodes or the regular cycles node editor, which will allow for Boolean operators operations. Um, no, currently there is no mode, no way of doing it. There is a Boolean socket that was added uh, more recently, but there is no checkbox yet, but it's planned to be added for geometry nodes. Um, you should be able to have checkboxes. Um, is there a resource available anywhere to easily create custom node mockups? I vaguely remember seeing some, something a while ago relating to Shack Loop particle nodes. Um, mockups. Custom node mockups. Not that I know. But if you know a little bit of, um, of, um, blend, of like code, you can mess up the current ones and then just, you know, compile it and, and make your own. Uh, or you can use a, yeah, you can use just a interface. I made my own in UI, pablosquez.art, and I, um, I made it like this, which is CSS and HTML, but, um, but yeah, anything really, it doesn't have to look like that. It has to just, even if it's just black and white paper, you know, that already helps a lot. Um, okay. And the last question, sorry. Well, that, if that was really the last one, I can just answer. <laughs> okay. Um, hello, Pablo. I'm a bit late, but I forgot to write it this last week. I wish you and everybody happy and healthy 2021. Thank you and happy to you too. To start this year off with a big boost of motivation, I've written a free add-on called Blender Analytics. It's made to keep track of your Blender usage times compared with the previous day, making Blender like a game of trying to use it more. Everything is stored locally, can access or sell your data. Uh, you can get it here if you'd like to try it out or I would like to get feedback on the code. Is it the same? The code it links to the same, so I can improve and make it available for a wider audience. Can you recommend to some places I can get helpful feedback, or is there any planning for a relaunch of the Rose My Add-on series? <laughs> ah, we should ask this to um, to Seabrand. But um, I mean, if you want people to try this, and because you know analytics and storing data of what you uh, of, of the usage, you know, these are scary words nowadays with all this privacy crap going around for Facebook and WhatsApp and Instagram and yeah, I would say that for an add-on of this type, if you're already giving it away for free anyway, why don't just also provide a link to like GitHub, which you are. Any feature missing? You're actually linking to GitHub here. However, are you putting the code out here? 14 days ago. Okay, so you are sharing the code. Okay, this is the most transparent thing you can do and it's great. Here you can see, okay, this is an add-on updater, panels, preferences, operators. So um, here actually people can see that you are storing things locally. Not, not here per se, I don't know exactly the code, but at least this is more transparent. So yeah, I think you should just make it more prominent that um, here's the code. You can see that I don't store anything. I don't take any data and 
then promote it. But yeah, then uh, it's open source. So promote to people to use it. But what's the goal? Are you sh like, this could be cool for people, like maybe an option to opt in and then share those settings somewhere, like in Blender, like in open data, for example, you know, like maybe people want to share, maybe they want to share what are they doing or what editor they work the most which setting now we can see that everybody's using auto smooth so or i don't know things like that maybe it could be cool to to improve the default settings in blender useful for looking at workflows yes like a hypersonic monkey brains is use, is saying here great name um and the last question, it's super late anyway. Uh, hi, Paula. I was just wondering if viewport sync options is something we can see in the near future. Although I've been working with 3D software for years, I'm still relatively new to Blender. I'm truly loving the software more every day. One thing I miss while using Blender is I don't see an easy way to sync and unsync the rotation pan or zoom of my viewports. When, for example, modeling a large object, I have a viewport on the front and the side open. If I zoom in or pan in the view, then I have to manually adjust the other view every time um, yes actually they, this has been talked in the past and there is even a patch going around for this synchronized viewport rotation the I, I, from what I remember back in the days the issue with this there was even a patch that I remember in the view settings you could have like sync yeah I don't know if people are linking to the patch, but I remember, I'm not crazy, I remember seeing somewhere that here, try to suggest it here, synchronizing editor between workspace. Yes, exactly, this was the patch. It was so close. I remember, like, the discussion was like, okay, what do I synchronize? Rotation, like, moving the viewport, or everything, like, the wireframe mode, the selections, the uh, the uh, overlays. So what should be synchronized? And that's mainly the reason why maybe it got stopped. Look, I even gave it a, a love icon somewhere here. Yes, I did. And this is from 2020. Ah, oh, no. oh, 2020 was a strange year. Um, yeah, ah, exactly there. I even proposed these changes to have sync view as an option and then sync settings that way we can have it split and then what you want is sync view but maybe other, other people would could have sync settings as well um, yeah there is a design task let's go make some noise over there in the design task um, like yeah yeah that would be awesome to have this absolutely there's a patch Oh yeah, so it works in, in different workspaces. So you go... <laughs> nice. Okay, this was adding way too many options. But um... Yeah, looks exciting. Th that the patch is still alive. And it was 2020 for me, this was... I, I would have said... <laughs> 2018 or so. Um, but yeah. This is super needed. Thanks for watching. Thanks for staying until the end. It's been a fantastic show. I actually went over time. I thought I wouldn't have enough things to talk about because there were not too many new features, but um, I managed to cover a few more questions and actually all the questions that were asked this week. So super happy about that and super happy to have you until the end. Next few days are gonna be a bit hectic, I think, because we are two days away of Blender 2.92 becoming beta and 2.93 becoming alpha. These times are crazy times, but it will be fun. In one month and a bit more, six weeks, seven weeks, we have the Blender 2.92 release. For that, we need artwork. So if you're doing cool stuff with Blender, especially geometry nodes, share it online, hashtag B3D and make yourself be seen and heard because we need content. We need, you know, every every release we make this page with all artwork and cool graphics and stuff. Well, we need your content for that. So please share 
make create with blender 2.92 so we can make a splash outside of the render community right otherwise we are in this bubble let's let's make some noise outside thanks for watching and i think we're ready to go with style in five four three two one it's been another episode full of stuff next week probably fuller so stay tuned same time same place next week